Hi guys and welcome to another video. Today we are going to take a look at how we are going to test a React component that is making an API request within the use effect hook. So it's quite simple uh, to test components like this. So in this case, we just want to test that the total number of users is being shown in the document. Right? But how do we actually go about testing cases like these? So I already have my test written down, uh, the to-do test, uh, to help to help guide us on what we want to do. Right. So the first thing that we want to actually take notice of is that this is a fetch function that is native to JavaScript to the browser's API. Right. So we need a way in order to mock the fetch function because when you are running the test. With the fetch, uh, fetch function, it will actually try and make an API call, which is not what we want. We want the test to be isolated from the API calls and all that. So we need to actually mock the fetch function. To do that, we need to access the uh, an object called global, right, which exists in JavaScript. So it's global and contains all these functions that most most of the times you just write them out of your head right uh, that's where all those functions exist right so when you check uh, global i have so many things going on here so it's where you can have the fetch function me at right so we access the fetch function and then we set or we assign uh, we give it what the just mock function right so we assign the fetch uh, to be what a just mock function so which will then what mock away or get rid of the native fetch api that already exists with uh, javascript where we can use the just mock functionality right. okay so let's go ahead and have our Test implementation. Okay. So first thing we want to do is we want to render the components, which is quite simple. So we have to so render the users, okay, which is uh, very easy. Then I want to show you guys one thing. So let's expect. So we want to see that get by text. So in this case, we just want to use get by text. And we want to oops we want to get by the total users should be what um, let's say maybe I don't know undefined or let's say let's say the zero right zero uh, to be in the document right so I want to run this test and see what just says about it. So bear in mind that we have actually changed the native implementation of fetch to a mock function. All right. So you can see just is giving us all these weird uh, kind of errors, uh, saying that we do have we have mocked the fetch function, but uh, the dot then doesn't exist with the normal just uh, function doesn't exist with a, a normal uh, you know the, the fetch the mock dot then doesn't exist so we need a way in order to assign the promise so then we then is basically used for promises right so we need a way in order to tell uh, just that this fetch function is a promise function so it returns what the promise uh, yeah so to do that we need to first do fetch dot so as you can see when you do fetch and you are trying to mock uh, the, the, the implementation itself behind the scenes javascript already uh, knows that this fetch is what mo uh, is a mock function but typescript doesn't know about it so that's why it's giving just these few just these native 
JavaScript word properties. But actually, we want just word properties to be accessible uh, in, a, in, in TypeScript, right? So to do that, we need to you know, create a reference to this function, but give it the type of what the just mock function. So let's say we have a mock fetch, mock fetch, then do so we assign it to fetch so it will take the same reference as fetch but we are going to tell typescript that this is the just mock function and what type of function is it mocking and it's the fetch function so this will give will tell typescript that what we are mocking uh, is from what the JavaScript fetch native API. So we can then go ahead and use mock fetch, then access all the just uh, mock properties that is given to the function. Right? So in this case, we want to mock resolve value. So mock resolve value. And what mock resolve value does is simply returns a promise. So in a case like this, when we call the fetch, oops. So when we call the fetch function, it will return a promise, and that's what this will uh, ensure the mock resolve value. So you are going to resolve something, uh, return a promise, and what do we want to return? We want to return an object. Right, an object with the function JSON. So we have JSON, and what that what does that want to return? That also returns what a promise, because we have a dot then also after the first dot then, signifying that the previous uh, function implementation returns what a promise. So we need to return a promise. So there is a function. So that returns a promise. So we use promise. Oops. Promise dot resolve. So if we want to resolve something. We want to resolve a value. And let's say we want to resolve a value like five. All right. So that's fine. But you can see that VS Code is complaining that the the object that we are giving to the mock resolve value is not done. We need to assign the other properties, which all of them are here, but we are not going to do that. That's not necessary in, in this particular case. So what we are going to do is simply just use as any, just to tell the uh, type that uh, don't worry about the rest. This is just what we want to work with. Okay. So let's save that and then check the test. Okay, so as you can see, the test is passing, but it's not also passing. It's passing in the sense that, yes, it's true that there is a value of zero in the document when it first loads. On this, uh, when it first loads, the value of the total users is zero. But just is uh, is complaining that. We are actually doing a state update, but we are not waiting for that state update to be done before we are doing our sessions, right? Uh, which is problematic, right? So we need to wait for all states to be updated and done before we can continue to do our sessions. And there are a few ways that we can go about that. In, in this video, we are just going to look at one of the ways which is using wait for so wait for is a function that is provided by the reactors library which helps to what ensure that that uh, all the states are done or done updating before we can continue to uh, uh, do any kind of what sessions on our test right so how do we use the wait for so wait for is simply a function that takes in what a function. So in a sense, it's a higher order function. 
So it takes in a function, and what does this function uh, that it takes in do? So it's simply the the assertion that we want to what, do when when the states are done, when all the updates are done. So basically, this when we want to perform this assertion that when the total number of users uh, is zero, right? Okay. So let's get rid of that. And VS Code is or ESLint in this case is telling us that wait for is a promise based function. So we need to wait for that, uh, wait for the promise to be done. And we can use the await key word. But we can't just write await. We need to have the function that this await being written into to be what a promise function. And to do that, we simply just use async, correct? So we write the async, then we await for the assertion to be done. Right. So let's save that and run the test again. And as you can see, it's passing, right? It's passing. Because obviously there is a zero in the document, right? Before before the states are done and when the states are done we, we still have the value here. but we know that the value the total number of users should now be what five right because we are resolving a value of five here so when uh, we get from what we get from the api should be what's shown in the document so basically the test that we have written isn't a correct test Right, isn't that correct? Because this test is just doing the initial uh, test case, not the final test case, right? So we need to change this to the final test case. So let's save that and check our test again. Cool, now it's passing. So we know that when we make an API request, the resolve value is then what saved into the states and is then shown in the document itself. So you must be very careful on testing the API request inside React. You must be very careful. So that's it for the first test. Now to the second test is to show that the initial number of users that or the total number of users is zero when the api fails so we need to perform a test case where in case the request that we are making fails what should happen inside the document right? so we have the test case like this so let's get rid of that go into our implementation and then basically just do copy this too right let's Send this back as async. Put this as async. Then we need to change this from five to zero. Okay, but remember that in the first case when we ran the test just like this, it was failing because um, just only knows that the the mock function is just a function. It, it doesn't know that it has to be an actual promise based on function. So in order to resolve that, we are going to use, uh, we've already resolved. So we are going to then what, make an assertion on the reject value or when the API request was fills. So to do that, we are going to use just mock rejected value. Right? We are going to reject the API request. And what value do we pass into? So let's say undefined, right? don't really care about anything but we do expect that the document or the should have a total number of users to be what, zero so let's save that and it passes right it passes and also shows the console error because we've set the console error to be here saying that this feel this feeling right it's feeling all right so that's it and it, 
how about uh, all our tests were written correctly so there's one way of testing apis or fetch functions inside react it's by mocking the the function itself and testing it there are a few other ways that you can go about testing one of them is to just move this entire fetch function into a function uh, into a function that exists in a different file uh, import that file and then mock that file in just instead of mocking the global fetch itself uh, we are going to take a look at that in another video but in this video this is all that we want to take a look at just testing or mocking the fetch function itself and then testing this on Thanks for sticking around. In the next video, we are going to take a look at more ways that we can test React applications. Thanks.